Hello everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Our lesson today is project part 2 from module 10. You can find this lesson in your student's book page 121 and in your workbook pages 105 and 138. As always, let's start with the learning objectives. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to Write the first draft of a biography about a person you admire Revise and edit the first draft Write your final biography Life is a journey, and throughout life we take steps to reach our goal. Each step helps us grow and become who we are meant to be. Like life, writing goes through a defined set of steps so we can reach the finalized piece of writing. In today's lesson, we will use the five steps of the writing process in order to write about a person you admire. Let's begin with the first step, which is pre-writing. As you all know, in this step, you're thinking of your topic. In other words, you're brainstorming and organizing ideas. But before we start a brainstorming, let's recall what is a biography. Very good. It's a piece of writing that tells true facts and information about someone's life, and it's written by another person. And now, let's recall the basic features of a biography. Start by writing the title, then move to paragraph 1 and answer the following questions. Next, move to paragraph 2 and answer the following questions. After that, move to paragraph 3 and answer the following question. Finally, move to paragraph 4 and answer the following questions. Let's answer another question. What tenses should you use when writing a biography? Super! You should use the present simple tense, the past simple tense, and the present perfect tense. Let's start brainstorming. Open your workbook page 138. I'd like you now to answer the following questions. Who is the biography about? What is he or she famous for? When and where was he or she born? How did his or her career begin? What was an important event in his or her life? What are some of his or her important achievements? What has he or she done lately? How are you affected by this person? What has he or she taught you? Now pause and answer. Back again, let's check your work. Nice work, everyone. Let's move to the next step which is drafting.
In this step, you have to write complete sentences and paragraphs. Remember to use the ideas from the writing plan. Open your copybook so that you can write your first draft. Now pause and start writing. Back again, let's read your first draft together. Bill Gates. Bill Gates is a famous businessman from the USA. He co-founded Microsoft Cooperation, the world's largest personal computer software company, in 1975. He wears glasses. Bill Gates was born in Seattle on the 28th of October, 1955. He wrote his first software program at the age of 13. He joined Harvard University in 1973. Then he started his career in 1975. In 1990, Bill became the PC industry's ultimate kingmaker. Gates has shown me that the road of success is not easy to navigate, but with hard work and passion, it's possible to achieve your dreams. Bill Gates became the richest man on the planet at the age of 39. In 1994, he and his wife established a charitable foundation. In 2005, Bill Gates was designated Time Magazine's Person of the Year. In May 2020, Gates said that he would spend $300 million to fight COVID-19, find the treatments and vaccines. Nice work, everyone. And now, let's move to the next step, which is revising. In this step, you have to read your first draft and make changes to improve it. Remember to use the DARE strategy. Let's first recall what do the letters in this word stand for. The D stands for, very good, for delete. Delete any unimportant information. The A stands for, add. Add details and linking sentences. The R stands for rearrange, stick to the topic and have a logical order. The E stands for exchange, exchange words for stronger ones. Let's start revising. I need you to read and delete any unimportant information. Very good, you have to delete, he wears the glasses. Let's move to the A and add some information. Very good, you can add some information about his charitable foundation. Let's read one more time to see if you need to rearrange any of your sentences. Perfect. You need to place this sentence in the last paragraph because, as we said before, you need to place information about what he taught you in the last paragraph. I need you now to substitute the word largest for a stronger one. Very good. You can use the word huge. And remember to use the superlative form of the word huge. Having finished revising, let's move to editing. In this step, you have to correct any spelling, punctuation, and organization mistakes. As you all know, in order to edit, we have to use the COPS strategy. 
Now, let's recall what do the letters in this word stand for. The C stands for very good capitalization. Capitalize proper nouns, I, and the first word in each sentence. The O stands for organization. Use neat handwriting, letter spacing, and complete sentences. The P stands for punctuation. Use punctuation marks. The S stands for very good spelling. Spell words correctly. Let's start editing. I need you to read to see if you need to capitalize the first letter of any word. Super! You have to use the uppercase of the letter O in October because it's a month. And now, let's read one more time to check the organization. Very good! You've organized your biography correctly. So far, so good. Let's read one more time to check if you've punctuated your sentences correctly. Yes, you have to place a comma before the word but because it's joining two independent clauses. I need you now to check the spelling of the word charitable. Very good. The sound ch is written as ch. Having finished editing, let's move to the last step, which is publishing. As you all know, in this step, you have to create a neat copy of your corrected writing. To do this, I need you to open your workbook page 139. Now pause and start writing. Back again, let's check your biography. What a nice piece of writing. Having published your biography, it's time to give you some feedback about your writing. To do this, I'll be using the 3 2 1 strategy. In the 3 section, I will tell you 3 things I liked about your writing. In the 2 section, I will tell you 2 things that could be improved. In the 1 section, I will give you one suggestion. The three things I like the most are using a variety of ideas, following the targeted layout, and using different structures. Two things that could be improved are using commas and using capital letters. My suggestion is that you could practice using commas and capital letters more frequently. As always, you are amazing today. Thank you so much. Bye.